Hello, my name is Dan Johnson. I'm a technical sound designer at Somatone. In the previous video, we set up the FMOD project to work with the GVR plugins. In this video, I'm going to set up the project to work with Unity. I'm using a Vive to demo, but the GVR plugins work with any VR device. I'm using FMOD 110 and Unity 562. Let's get started. So the first thing you're going to do is download the Steam VR prefab and the Viking Village project. Uh, you can go to the store. Uh, if you don't have that window, you just go to Window Asset Store. Search uh, Unity Viking. And it'll be this one. Uh, you'll have a download button, but I've already installed it and imported it into this project. It takes a little bit of time. Uh, and then you want to search Steam VR, no space. Import it into your project. Uh, you will get a couple of uh, warnings when you when you do that. You will get API update. Uh, just click I made a backup. Go ahead, and then you'll get the Steam optimization. You just want to hit accept all. And the other two things we need are the FMOD integration and the GVR. So what you're going to do. Go to the FMOD website and click Downloads and scroll down to where it says Unity and you want to make sure that you have the version, the version of the integration with the version of Studio that you're using. Uh, like I said, I'm using 1.10 so it's not available here yet. Uh, it should be when you're viewing this video. Back in Unity, go to Assets. Import package, custom package, and then I have it in my downloads. I'm going to import FMOD all and import, and then we'll see. We'll get a warning down here that the FMOD Studio is not, or the FMOD Studio project is not set. That's expected. Just go into event settings and go to Studio Project Pass, and then browse for your project. And while we're here, uh, we're going to go to Add Plugin, type GVR Audio, and that will load the GVR into Unity so that FMOD can reference it when it's doing its audio backend. And in our village here, uh, we're going to just change a few things so that we can use it for VR. Mouse lock. Accessible volume, the canvas and event system, and the quality manager can all be deleted. Quality manager is what held all the cameras that they were using. Uh, we don't need those for this because we're going to be replacing it with the Steam VR prefabs. Speaking of that, we're going to go into our project, uh, go to the Steam VR folder, and you want to go to prefabs. And then go over, I'm going to go over here and put the camera rig in this open field over here. And I'm just going to drag it in. And I'm also going to drag in the Steam VR renderer script. And on the camera rig, in order to hear things, we need to set up the FMOD event listener. Uh, so you're going to go to camera rig. Camera head, camera ears, and then deactivate the Unity audio listener and add the FMOD listener. And we're going to put in our first FMOD object. So I'm just going to call this FMOD sound field. Add a component, FMOD emitter. Uh, and then I want it to start when the object starts, and I want it to stop when the object is destroyed. And then I will click this search button, and it will should auto-populate with all the events in my project that I linked up. And then I have it in Ambience Sound Field. So I'm going to go ahead and save that so far, and then we're going to test it out. All right, it looks good. It's important to note that the sound field can be anywhere in the scene. It has no distance attenuation on it whatsoever. 
it only responds to the rotation of the ears in this case. So I just like to put it on top of the starting point for our player, but you can literally put it anywhere. So that's great for our uh, backdrop ambience, but we want to add some more point sources because when we're moving through the level, we want to hear the ambience changing. So I'm going to create a new empty object and I'm going to call this fmod water. And then again, add an emitter, start and destroy, search for my event, and water. But this one, it is important to where I put it, because this is going to be a point source. I'm going to put it over here. In the water, below the character's ears because it does sound differently if it's on the level plane as opposed to below the player or above the player. And I'm also going to go into my prefabs folder and create a new prefab. And I'm going to call this fmod water. I'm going to drag this object onto it first, so that is this object is the blueprint for this prefab. Uh, basically, what this allows me to do is just pull these into the, the scene. So we can put them uh, near the water, and I don't have to relink the fmod event to this object. And this is better than just duplicating the object, because if I need to change this at any point, I only have to change one and then hit this apply button and it'll change all of them. And I can show you how that that works uh, when we get to the torches. So I'm just setting these up fairly far apart because I don't want uh, we only have one sound playing uh, one bass sound. And if I put them too close together, we're going to get some weird phasing issues but I still want to cover the entire coast. I don't want to have an area where there's just an odd lack of sound. And that should be good. We will probably double check that and mix those later. Okay. And I am going to select all of these water events that I just created, or water objects that I just created, and put them into a new game object. And that's just essentially just being a folder. Uh, let's move on to the torches. Uh, so I'm just going to select one of these torches here. And we can see most of them are based off the same prefab, which is great. So what we're going to do is go into the uh, specific point where the fire is coming from. Prop torch underscore zero one, uh, as opposed to the pillar, which would come from down here. And the the point that is going to come from is the origin of the object. So that's pretty close. We could actually you now we're actually going to make a new game object uh, in there and call this sound source. And what I'm going to do is put that right at the point where the fire is coming from. And then add our emitter, start and destroy, and link up our event. And now I'm going to go to this, the top object, and hit apply. You can see all of the other torches in the level that were linked to the same prefab now have our fire event linked to them. And the reason I am putting them so I'm placing the sound so precisely is because we have a bigger mixing space as sound designers. So if you put a sound source coming from an object's base when it should be coming from its top, it's going to sound really weird 
to our ears and it's going to bring you out of the experience. Uh, the usual example of this is, say you have a monster in VR. Big, huge monster, like three times the size of a human. You don't want the footsteps coming from the same place where the roar is coming from. Uh, you can get away with that, no problem, in, in 3D audio. But with VR audio, you really want the footsteps coming from the feet and the roar coming from the, either the throat or the, the mouth. The next audio source we need to add is these cranes. And uh, there are three of them in the level, and they're all prefabs too. So I'm just going to put it on this wheel, because I think that's where the sound would come from. And again, emitter. Start and destroy. And link up the event. And then I'm going to go to the top level and apply. And you can see our other cranes have our emitter as well. Another ambience that we wanted to add were the frogs. So I'm going to go to my hierarchy, make an object, name it fmod frog, and add a component, fmod emitter, start and destroy, link up the event, and place it. Just going to put it in this grass here. And then I'm going to create another object. Same thing, fmod frog. I'm going to call this fmod frog 2. So I don't get confused. I'm going to put a label on it. And I have that one coming from over here. And then add an emitter. Start and destroy, and link up our events. Um, I didn't make prefabs for those because I'm only making two of them. Uh, if I was to, wanted to put a lot of frogs in here, I would make a prefab, but it's not really worth it for just one. Okay, and the last thing we want to add is our bird. So I'm going to go over here onto this wall and create a cube that is going to be a stand-in for our bird. Just put it up here. And I'm going to rename it bird. Add an emitter. Again, start and destroy. Ambience bird. And I'm also going to add an animator. It's very important to add an animator, not an animation. And in our project, create an animator controller and an animation. So the controller, we're going to call bird controller. And the animation we can call flying around. And double click on the controller, it should bring up the animator in this window. If that doesn't show up, go to Window Animator right there. And then I'm going to just drag in this event. And uh, it should go immediately from entry into this animation. And I'm going to go into it uh, in the project. I'm going to go into its settings and make sure that it loops. And back in our bird, select our animator and link it up to the animator component. And then we're going to move back to the scene. I'm going to make sure the bird is selected, and I'm going to open up the animation window. Uh, if you don't have that window animation, and I'm going to add a property. Position. And I'm going to set this up so it flies around the player. Uh, I am going to make this longer because this is one second. 
and I'm going to make that about a minute. So I'm going to uh, scroll wheel down to make this, to turn this into 60. So that takes a minute. And the easiest way to set the length is just to move the last keyframe to the place in time that you want. And I'm going to go ahead and move the selector over to about five seconds. Add a key so that he just, the bird just sits here for a couple seconds. And then I'm going to have him fly around. Scroll back here and hit spacebar. I'm just going to check to see how slow that is. That looks to be a good speed. And I'm going to turn off record mode. Hit save. And we'll test out our ambience. So that sounds pretty good. The last thing we want to do for this video is just add a quick way of moving around in VR. Uh, so I'm going to go on to one of these controllers on my camera rig, and I'm going to add some of the default scripts uh, from the VR uh, from the Steam VR package. Uh, so I'm just going to search Steam, and we have a bunch of pre-made scripts that we can add. I'm going to add the laser pointer. Switch it to red and add the teleporter. And then click to teleport on click and use collider. And then we'll go ahead and test that out. All right, pretty good. Uh, that's it for this video. Uh, in the next video, I will set up the gun and some more FMOD events.